So building a passive blog online, how passive is it exactly? Well, not very. It takes a lot of work, but once you get those wheels rolling, that's when things can change. Hello YouTube and a very special hello to all my subscribers. My name's Phil and welcome to my channel. This is where I discuss my journey building an online income and I share with you all my successes and some of my failures. So if you're joining me for the first time, why not subscribe now? Okay guys, so this morning I got a very interesting email from another subscriber called Asha. So thank you to Asha and thank you to all the other people who are actually sending me emails and you can check that email address in the description if you've got a question. So Asha sent me an email. He has just started training for a new IT job, which he hopes to start very soon. He's gonna be working full time. Now he's kind of on the fence about joining Project 24, which is a training course which is set up by Income School. Now he's just wondering how much time does he actually have to dedicate to it? Is it a full time job? Is it a full time endeavor? Or can he only spend about an hour a day? Would that still work? Well. In my experience over the last year, I have actually been treating my online income business as a full-time job, basically. Um, but I'm in a position where I work in the evenings and I'm able to earn a fairly good salary for the amount of hours that I do, which leaves me the whole day to, uh, to actually work on the, the sites. However, there are many members of Project 24 who have full-time jobs and have actually reached full-time incomes already. There was actually a guy that was on the Project 24 podcast only last week who'd done that. He's earning somewhere between three and four thousand dollars a month and he still works full-time. So the thing really is, yes, I spend all this time working on my sites, but I have to be in Honest with you, I'm not that efficient with my time. I waste a lot of time and in fact probably I spend only a couple of hours a day actually being proactive and actually doing things that push the needle forward. So I gave some advice to Asha and I want to uh, give the same advice to you guys who are watching. Now this will apply to you if you're kind of thinking is Project 24 a good fit for me but also just should I start a blog? Should I start a YouTube channel? Should I start trying to build an online income? So make sure you watch right until the end. So the first thing I want to say is basically if you're considering taking a course, something like Project 24, don't forget that it's not just about doing the work to actually build your blog or YouTube channel. There is a lot of time that you have to dedicate to the training element to it. So um, in a video that I made uh, a couple months ago, I actually went through and I documented how much video content there was within Project 24. So at the moment, there's actually 20 mini courses within Project 24, including the 60 steps to blogging success and the 60 steps to YouTube success. Um, but in addition to that, there's 18 other kind of mini courses on all the different elements that you need in your business, from things like building uh, an email list, from monetizing with ads, from the most important thing, search analysis. So there's a lot of time that you need to dedicate to it. And I think at the moment there's something like in excess of 24 hours of video footage. So even just doing that will take up an hour a day, that will take up probably about 24 days in a row. So don't forget that you've got to dedicate time to actually learning the techniques that you're paying for. And this would be the same for any course that you choose to take or if you're just trying to learn from free resources on YouTube. However, the thing I would say is that those videos individually are only about five minutes to about 30, 40 minutes long. Now what I did was I actually used to listen to them as I commuted to work or as I was walking the dog or as I was doing my shopping in the supermarket. So a lot of them, although they are videos, they really could be listened to as a podcast because it's the information that you're trying to learn. So if you kind of learn on the go, you can use wasted time, dead time, in a more produ uh, productive way. Of course, the other thing is uh, to replace activities that you're doing now with training. So that could be things like uh, watching TV. I mean, before I started Project 24, I watched a lot of TV, lots of movies, at least one movie a day. Um, I also was a big gamer. I used to waste so many hours playing computer games. Uh, I was really into my flight sims, so those, those take a lot of time. 
Um, but I just replaced all that with learning. So you're going to have to make some sacrifices because this is not going to happen on its own. So in addition to working within your schedule, you can actually adapt your schedule for this. So um, something that my wife's been doing in the last couple of days is to get up early. She's been doing a, she's going to do a 21 day challenge to wake up and do four kilometers. Um, I'll put the conversion into miles, I can't quite remember, between the metric and the imperial right now. Uh, she's doing four kilometers before midday. So she normally gets up around six to seven, goes to take, take the dog for a walk. And I've been joining her for a couple of uh, mornings as well. And I found that by waking up around six or seven, which is maybe an hour to two hours before I would normally wake up, I was, I was having um, things edited before 10 o'clock. I was writing posts even before I would have woken up normally. So just those extra couple hours every day, if you could do it for a month, two months, you could blast through that training, you could get through your 60 steps and really have a seed in the ground. Of course, once you've done all the training, you've actually got to produce the content. So if we talk about writing a blog, following the Project 24 method, they say that you should write three different types of posts with different types of uh, complexity within the uh, actual research you're doing and the information that you're providing. So the shorter posts are called response posts and based on the post recipe, which is something that they t teach within Project 24, you're gonna have to spend anywhere between two hours or more on that, just with the research and the writing. For a staple post, it's twice as much, so around four hours minimum, they say. And with the pillar posts, these are the ma massive meaty kind of posts that hold up your business and have the most research and the most uh, detail within them. These will take you anywhere between eight hours. So that's not eight hours of writing, that's really uh, the writing plus the research that you put into it. So of course, if you are only spending one hour a day, and someone else is gonna spend two hours a day doing this, you're going to take twice as long as they will. So when it comes to producing content early on, you're limited in how much time you can actually uh, put into it. But don't forget, once you've gone through and you've written about 30 posts, you've learned how to do that, you've learned what to look for in a good post, you can, if you're able to, outsource that. Now that's what I did for two of my sites. I outsourced them completely after having written the first 30 to 40 posts on site one. So I knew kind of what I was looking for. And uh, so that, it took me a lot less time. All I did was to go through and edit them, format them a little bit. So I would say for the same time, normally writing one post myself, I could edit maybe two, three posts. So that's one way to up your productivity. Another thing is when you're doing your research, do it beforehand. If you know you have a particular query that you're gonna write a post on, kind of listen to the YouTube videos about that. Read up on the other articles, read some books about it. So you can, again, listen to YouTube channels as you're uh, going about your daily business, you're doing your shopping, you're driving uh, to work, you're, you're dropping the kids off at school, whatever you're doing. So you can listen to a YouTube channel as you're doing that. And if you're gonna be reading, instead of reading a magazine, instead of reading about your sports team, go and do your research there. That means when you come to sit down and write a post, it's going to come much more quickly and much more easily. Another thing is when you're writing, you know, write your post on one day and give it, a, you know, give it a night. Sleep on it, come back the next day and edit it because you're gonna do that much better than if you're trying to edit after writing an article. So basically, if you edit after you write the article and then you read it again the next day, you're probably gonna to have to edit it twice. So I would always say, um, write it one day and edit it another day before you publish. So that's writing. Filming videos for YouTube is again, something that takes time. Even a fairly short video, like a 10 minute video, it will take you, I would say, up to an hour, maybe even more to plan it, to rehearse it, because even this video, I've gone through and I've rehearsed it a couple times to try and really get my head around what I'm trying to talk about and to try and make it as interesting and helpful as I can for you watching. So every video is gonna take you time to think about what you're gonna do and to actually rehearse it. Then, obviously after you've filmed it, you've gotta spend time editing it. Now even a 10 minute video, it can take 
a bit of time to edit it. Now it depends what you want. If you just go in and you chop off the ends and put it up, which is absolutely fine, yes, that may not take you as long. But even if you just want to put some uh, visual aids on some text overlay, that takes you time. Um, and it really depends on your audience. So when I'm editing videos like this, I put up a little bit of information and it doesn't take too much time because for the most part, everyone watching this is a native English speaker. But if I compare this to another YouTube channel that I have, which is aimed at students learning English, I have to put a lot more vocabulary up. I have to do a lot more in terms of visual aids to help them sort of keep up with what we're saying, to keep them interested. And I had a, a 10, 15 minute video, and the other week it took me four hours to edit that because that's the level of um, the edit that I wanted. That's the information I wanted to give my audience for that YouTube channel. So don't underestimate how long it will take you to actually film and edit a very short video. Of course, if you're able to, you can outsource that. But again, you want to always try and do the things the first time yourself just so you know what you're looking for uh, personally and then you outsource that to someone to help you. Okay, so imagine you have limited time, uh, you've got a full-time job and uh, you're you know, trying to make the most of the, the little time that you have. There are some things that I would say you've got to stop doing. Um, so one of the biggest time wastes is actually looking at your stats. So I would say for the first six months of building a website of even uh, building a YouTube channel, don't look at your stats. Don't worry about them. Yes, you should definitely get uh, Google Analytics installed and set up. You should also get Google, Google Search Console set up as well. But don't worry too much about looking at them. Don't do what I do, which is to look at it every day. For one, it's just a waste of your time. You can't really do much day to day. And another thing, um, it goes up and down. So you're going to have wins and you're going to have uh, defeats and those defeats will just ruin your mood so looking at Google Analytics just before you're gonna write a post is not a good idea um, so I would say if you're going to look at that kind of thing try and limit yourself to once a month once a week maybe you really want to see that over month to month you're actually um, increasing your page views that you're making progress that's all you need within the six months to see that this does actually work if you put the effort into it. The other thing is social media. Social media is a massive drag on your time and when it comes to building an online income, most of the things that people tell you to do is just not gonna help you push that needle forward. So I would say anything like Twitter, Instagram, in, to my mind, waste of your time because they're not really search engines you should really put your time into things like YouTube. So once you produce a video, put it on YouTube, it's there forever in theory. So that content can always be found. But if you put a tweet on Twitter, it's gone, right? I don't, I don't even have a Twitter account. I think it's a total waste of time. And that's just my opinion. Um, the other thing obviously is Facebook. So Facebook is not great for bloggers, really, because they're very jealous about their traffic. They want to keep people uh, on their page. However, if you uh, do want to use Facebook, the only reason to set up a Facebook page, a fan page, is so that you can join Facebook groups under your brand. Once you're there in the Facebook groups, you want to interact with your audience, you want to serve your audience, and then if it makes sense, redirect them to one of your resources. Don't just go in there posting memes or just randomly uh, saying stuff. You should be in there being as helpful as you can, building up a relationship one-on-one -on -one with people and then bringing them over to your YouTube channel, bringing them over to your blog. That is the only decent use of your time when it comes to Facebook. But to be honest, for the first six months, just get your head down, do your writing, uh, film your videos, and then afterwards you can start promoting them. The other thing is if you do join Project 24, stay out of the Project 24 community. So um, one of the great things about Project 24 is we have this forum where all the members can sort of discuss issues they're having, give solutions. It's really very, very useful. And also you get access to Jim Harmer, Ricky Kessler, and the other members of Income School, the staff members. However, 
it is a massive drain on your time. You can get sucked into these inspirational stories, sucked into all of these tips. So my advice is if you are a Project 24 member or you're gonna join, then make sure you only use the community when you really have a problem. I spend a lot of time in there and waste a lot of time in there, although it is interesting. So make sure that you only use these resources when you really have an issue. And the last point here for things that you really shouldn't be doing, and this is from personal experience, do not chop and change from one project to another. Stick with something. If you're the sort of person, and this was certainly me, if you start a project, a new website, and you give up within the month, if you're the sort of person that has that uh, shiny object syndrome, this is me, um, then you're never really gonna get anywhere. So once you have a project, stick with it. Build it up until it succeeds or fails. And how can you tell if a website is going to fail? Well, Project 24 have a timeline, month for month, from month zero to month 24. And it gives you this kind of conservative idea of how many page views you should have, uh, how much money the blog should be making you. And if you just compare your progress to that, if you're a, a couple hundred below or a couple thousand above, you know, as long as you're within sort of a range of that, you're doing well. And this really helped me because I had no idea about building organic traffic before. And so just really that's my biggest tip. I made the mistake. I've told you that I've got three Project 24 websites. I've told you that I've got three YouTube channels. I'm still trying to learn um, not to do this, but you know, you can only learn from someone else's failures. So this is my advice to you. Please pay attention to it. Make sure you stick to one thing, build it up to success or failure. If it fails, let's start something else. Let's try and do it again, because every single failure you're learning something not to do the next time. So Asher was on the fence. Should he buy Project 24 or shouldn't he? Should he buy it later? What's, you know, should he do his training first? Well, I think the, f the first thing is, if you don't have the money, don't get into debt. It's not worth getting into debt for something like this. Um, the Income School YouTube channel is pretty good. I think you get a lot of information in there and if you're the sort of person that can figure things out, read between the lines, probably that's all you need, to be honest. But definitely don't get yourself into debt. Um, although I think it's a very good course, it's not worth getting into debt at all. Um, but the other thing I would say is that since buying it and signing up for the second year, I've actually got that money back. So all that investment, I have got that back from doing this, from putting myself out there and creating content. So um, don't be afraid. If you do have the money now and you're thinking, okay, should I go on a holiday or should I put it into income school? I'd put it into income school because a holiday is not going to pay for itself in the future. And as I said before, if you're the sort of person that starts things and gives up, then this is definitely gonna give you the structure that you need. There are, as I said, the people that can use just the free resources and they still make progress. But I'm not one of those people. I needed a structure. I needed a goal. I needed someone there every day in the 60 steps saying, do this, do that, then do that. And by following those steps, that program, I have made massive progress, I think. I've actually got free organic traffic to websites for the first time in my life. And I've been trying to do this for five years. So yes, if you're in the same shoes as me and you're the sort of person that really, you know, you've never really followed a program like this before and you keep moving and changing what you're looking at, this will help you. And the other thing is if you wanna make a change in your life. I remember a year ago when I decided to actually purchase, it was because I actually believed in Jim and Ricky. Um, I felt a kind of a connection to them. I thought they weren't scam artists and they definitely are. I know this now on the other side. It was also, I had a bit of a problem with my life. I wanted to make a change. I wanted to support my family and to do it in a way where I had a bit of flexibility in my life. So I'm well on the way to doing that, but it does take time. It's not passive, but once you get your income stream rolling, it does become passive. So here's the thing. If you do want to join Project 24, if you do want to make a change, the same change that I made, why not check out the link in the description 
and go watch the webinar. Okay guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in a future video because someone's doing some building work upstairs and I have to stop the video now. <laughs>